Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will. I'm over here on the side, since you know what I'm saying, sm sm small space, but I got my guests from Trap and Grab. Grab and Trap. They're Grab and Trap. <laughs> by, the, by Prince Bird. And his associate. But yeah, we um go get it popping, we go get it started. So how about y'all introduce yourselves to my viewers? Well, it's your boy, the head chef, Prince Bird. I'm over here with my brother. D. Tatum. You know what I'm saying? We grabbing trap. Grabbing trap. Come vibe with us. Come eat with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to say welcome to the platform. Yes, sir. And thank y'all for dropping by because I usually don't get a whole lot of guests um, face to face, but it's just a difference being able to, you know, be in the same room and just, you know, vibe because mm -hmm. it just be a lot of tension out here in these streets. You know, everybody is not so, um, trusting yeah. and stuff like that, but we need to quit all that because we family, you know, regardless of where you come from and and who you are and what block you're from, you know, we all family. And we just got to keep that notion. And we got to be able to be an example out here for these, you know, young kids out here. Because if they see us, you know, coming together and working together and loving each other, then it would all spread out, you know, a good virus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Spread the love, my babies. So how about... Each each of y'all give us like a like a brief introduction about yourselves and what got y'all started. I started since. <laughs> well, it started. Man, I'm gonna take it way back. It started when I was younger, man. My grandma, I was like eight years old. She got this big independence rule for her boys and her girls. She never wanted a, us to ever depend on a woman. She wanted us to want a woman. She wanted us to learn how to cook, clean. So she used to have me and my little cousin David in there cooking. David was little, so he used to just run away. And I used to be in there, because I like to eat. I used to watch the Food Channel for fun. I, had, I was a big fat boy when I was a kid. I don't care. So I just like to watch food. I just watch the Food Channel. So she used to have me in there just starting to make the simple stuff. Gravy from scratch. And I just like, I kept falling in love with it. And years went on. I'm just, I just got a love for food, a passion for food. So I ended up meeting this guy through my sister, and they ended up getting married, and we just clicked from there. And then he came. I ended up coming in on with this idea, and here I am. Cause mm -hmm. Garbage Trap really was started like me and my brother, my big brother G, he passed away a couple of weeks from cancer. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, my baby oh, yeah. G. You know we G, G strong. Me and him worked at Outback and Denny's together, both jobs. So morning we saw each other in between jobs. We used to get right in between jobs, and we just dream, like, bro. Mm -hmm. Then one day he like, bro, we just need to get a food truck. We like cooking. Let's stop cooking for these motherfuckers. I'm like, man, you right. So we just started. Every day we just kept dreaming about it. Like, I mean, bro, we just need to get food. We talking about doing Michigan games and all that. So one day it was my uh, wife' birthday party, and my father-in-law came. And I had made some hibachi for everybody. And he just came in my ear and he was like, man, count everybody in the room. So I said, huh? So I counted it and I'm like, oh man, it's like, it's a good like 50, 60 people here. And he was like, how much you would charge for all that? I'm like, for this? Man, I let it go for 15, I ain't gonna tax the people. He said, calculate that. I calculated and he said, that's what you made just in a day. I was like, man. So it like, it, it just wandered on me for like two weeks. So I was just, everybody was like, I was working at Denny's and I post my food every day. So everybody was like, you need to have your own restaurant. You know? So I'm like, no, nah, it's all right. It ain't that good. Then one day I just woke up with all my spirit and I, I'm like, man, I'm just about to do one sale and just see how it go. And my cousin RG was like, what you going to call it? I said, I don't know. I want to play some good music and have some good food and just everybody just vibe and eat a good time. You know what I'm saying? Just come, come trap it up. Just come grab a plate. And then she was like, we'll call it grabbing trap. I'm like, dang, grabbing trap, that's different. So we ran with that. My homeboy Aaron made my logo. Well, I made my first logo. It's 
kind of raggedy. Don't go look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but my my brother, he made the second one. Then I went to my homeboy, um, Quentin, Quentin Hughes. He made the logo that we is now, and I just I just been running with it ever since. So what made you wanted to just you know get your food out there because it's a challenge, you know, because. Yeah. When you cooking and everything like that for yourself, then there's no worries. But then you got people that is step skeptical. Mm -hmm. And did you have a little like a you know a doubtful moment like you know maybe it, um my food ain't that good and this and that? I but still do that to this day. <laughs> you always do it. Every, I, time, I, every time I cook, I, I, like, bro, I'm my biggest look critic. At him, look at him, man. I don't even like looking at people eating my food. I was just like, I'll turn my head. I'm like, bro, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to fail before I'm ready to win. Because it's easy to prepare for win, but nobody ready for failure. So I'll be ready to be like, dang, somebody going to say this, that. But, like, everybody kept telling me, like, it's good, you know. I put my love, I really, like, real deal love food. So I'm like, I'm not, I don't really do it for the money because that's why my prices never be skyrocket. It's the love of the food. I love to feed people. I love to Food brings so much happiness. You ever saw a woman when she eat, what she do? She dance. <laughs> she start dancing because it's good. You know, the woman happy. Woman is right. happy when she eating. So you're like, when you, my daughter, I feel something, she give me a big thumbs up. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's what I do it for. I do it just to see the happiness that it brings people. You know, food brings people happiness, especially good food. Some food that you just make you just want to sit back and go to sleep. You got to um, unbucket your belly, you know what I'm saying? Let your belly hang out and just go to sleep on it. Oh, yeah, I feel that, man, because, shoot, I'm going to cook myself, man, at my day job, man, and, shoot, people don't play about their food, they man. They don't, they don't. So, I wanted to, you know, go a little deep with this question. Um, so, what was, like, you know, you already said about your brother and everything like that. Um, how you coping with that? Man, it's, see, it's, it's. I want to say it's hard, but my brother had this spirit. Like, when you think about him, all I have is good memories. I never had a bad memory with him. We never got into it. And all he taught me was, like, don't nobody give a fuck about you. You got to keep doing what you're doing. I don't care if nobody supports you. You got to keep going. He had that drive, like, let's do it. Like, so it's like, when I get sad, I just think of him. And he, like, I just think about what he'll say. I won't think about, oh, he gone. I think about if he was here right now, I imagine, what would he say to me? And he probably say, get your ass up and sell this food, you bullshitting. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I I keep him in my head. It's like, it's more like motivation because at first, I really, I slowed down for a minute. And, like, now that he gone, I'm like, man, I got to I gotta grind for two of us now. Like, it's my job to make sure this succeed because I got to finish the job. You're leaving it on me. So, it's like, it's more like a motivation and it's hurt not to have my brother there though, but I know he like I can feel him behind me, push me like keep going. So mm -hmm. uh, I just use it as a I turn my like I turn my pain into gain. So I use it as a way to keep going because when I was doing it for just for myself, I was ah now that I got to do it for him. I'm in like full throttle mode now. Yeah, I feel you on that because you know people really don't understand grief in our communities. Is this you know, they act like, you know, you're supposed to get over stuff because they want you to get over stuff. Mm -hmm. And it don't work like that. Especially, it's all about the bond and everything sacred, bro. And and just like I was just telling my friends um, recently, because no matter how many funerals and stuff like that that I have attended, everybody hits differently for me. And that's why I made... In my goal and my mission to make sure that I was a part of, of his funeral because, you know, like I said, when we go, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's going to react. But it's all about, you know, showing up when you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, giving that person just that grace and that appreciation because we all have people in our lives that meant something to us or gave us the game or just was like a surrogate, you know, sibling or parent or child. You know, it, it just all depends on who you are as, as an individual because you can't teach character. 
You know what I'm saying? So, um, what about you? Same question. Um, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on through my life that keep me motivated, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm just here to help my brother keep this business going, you know. I love to cook, so that's about it. That's what's up, man. And, but y'all wanted to, you know, also ask you what's the, the thing that you cherish the most, like, what I mean by that is, um, you know, what makes you get up in the morning and be able to continue because, you know, going to business for yourself is hard mm -hmm. because whether the critics and the haters and this and that, mm -hmm. um, we are our own worst enemy, you know, in a way, like, because especially when you're doing something positive, when you're doing something that only you can see, I know that it can be a lot um, challenging to convince yourself that you're the best and that nobody is fucking with you and, and this and that, you know, not on no arrogant or cocky mm -hmm. shit, it's, just, it's confidence. Mm -hmm. So what's like your um, prep talk and what's your motivator and what's your like, speech that you give yourself? Well, I always told myself, strive for greatness, failure is not an option, so, you know, and then my kids is one of my, my, my one motive, keeps me going, so, that's, that's always on my mind. For me, I have to say it's two things. One, I have to say, I, I just don't want to go back to the struggle. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go back to, you know what I'm saying? If I fail, it's back to rock bottom. It's back to sleeping in cars. It's back to sleeping at strangers' house, staying in my friend's basement, sleeping in my auntie house, with a full of people. Back to me walking to Burger King. Like I wake up every day, and it's not, and I don't wake up and be like, oh, I'm the best. I'm do this. I wake up and I just talk to God. Like me and God do a one on one. Like God, like I can't. This is, this is what you got planned for me. I really didn't want to cook. I really <laughs> wanted to give up cooking. Mm -hmm. When God had placed this in my heart. Then I have to say the second thing is is really, people might not say this, but it's really Saginaw will keep me going. Like ninety five my customer, ninety five percent of my customers are strangers. It's people I met doing doing sales. Like I get random like random inboxes from people like, man, bro, you doing it good thing. We see you out here, just keep pushing. Like just to hear that from my city, like people I don't even never even knew around here, and they'll come mess with me, eat the food. Like bro, you 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 doing a good thing, keep going, bro. Like. Just get the respect and love from my customers in the city of Saginaw and what I'm trying to do is that's what really keep me up. Because I be like, I don't feel like cooking. They be like, bro, you got to cook, man. Your food be good. You put, like, I'm my biggest critic. So mm -hmm. I doubt myself almost every sale, but seeing them confirmation from my city, how they come and they come on and support me from time to time, that's what keep me going. Like, I'm giving my city hope, so that's what really keep me going. Yeah, so it, was it like a... Like a confirmation when you, you got your first sale or you received like um your first review or just people sharing your stuff like that's a <coughs> great feeling you know because i would say like me you know as a businessman myself you know just to start something from scratch um that's amazing you know just having a plan and I tell people this all the time, all it takes is a plan. All it takes for you to see it first, for everybody else to see it. And everybody just isn't so optimistic. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just, you know, rather be workers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to be a boss, it's a different, you know, pedigree. Yeah, mm -hmm. nah, it takes a loss to be a boss. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. And, and that's where people don't, like, people, they, they, they see failure and they give up. But well, failure is really your learning lesson. Okay. I wear I wear my losses just like I wear my wings. Mm -hmm. So like when I fail, I don't just pump them. like I be like for two minutes I ain't gonna lie, but I mean I give up. <laughs> but then I think about like all right, no, what I do wrong? What all right they didn't like this item. That's good, but I don't know until I try. Then I might come out with another item and they. Phew. So it's like, yeah, it is. Got a lot. 
You gotta learn how to take a loss. You gotta, them losses is learning lessons. Oh, yeah. It's like mistakes. If you don't learn from mistakes, you're gonna keep making the same mistake and you ain't gonna go nowhere. Yeah, that's true too. And I just tell people like this, um, in order to get better, you gotta pretty much like watch um, others, you know what I'm saying, who have perfect, you know, perfect their craft. Cause me, you know, me being a podcaster and everything like that, um, I watch like 90 shows, man. I watch old talk shows <coughs> like Mattel and Horado and, you know, just trying to gain a little of their formula so I can mix them together and create my own creation and, por po you know, potion. And because I just want to get great, you know, at what I do. And then just looking up different topics and different, um, like, history books and stuff like that. Just trying to learn what I can learn so I can pretty much keep stuff interesting and, and keep stuff... Um, fresh as always, because you know what I'm saying you don't want to um, bore you know bore your clientele or you know and, and for me I don't want to bore my fan base. I always want to keep everything fresh and keep everything new. So next question: What was the menu um, like? You know what was the menu um, like the inspiration behind like y'all creations, y'all dishes, and stuff like that. Cause y'all be coming up with some shit I ain't never seen before. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, in fact, you know, this this was one of, like this the main thing, one of one of the main things right here. And it's the trap box. Yeah, this is really like everybody see me. What's up with that trap box? So damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trap box. So you know this this one of the. It's like when I made this, it's really don't supposed to be from one person, but you know, some people just can eat like when I thought about <laughs> it, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's a lot of people eat it by itself. When I thought about it, it's like it's a variety box. It's like a sampler, but stuff we like to eat. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it was a box like I thought about the single mama with two kids, mm -hmm. uh the couple that don't know what they want to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like you get your variety where you can Split a burger in half. You mm -hmm. both got like two, three wings, a piece of fries, a drink, you know, all that. And then you only you get it for the low. Like, the highest the trap box I got is a $15. And I might have some ribs in it. But they go low as $12. Yeah. Damn. You, get, you know what I'm saying? You get all that food. You know, when I drop that, a lot of people are like, dang, you, you got some. Like, my homeboy B. Woo, I saw him on the show a couple times. Um, he, um, he was like, man, now you doing something crazy with that trap box. And... Every since then, I mean, like, dropping trap boxes. But it's like, dropping, like, China, what they say now, dropping exotic food. Food we don't, we don't got here. Because we don't got no restaurants in Saginaw, so. No. no. So I was like, I'm tired of driving to the D. I'm not to make, I ran almost every restaurant on Bay Road. Outback, Denny's, Applebee's, Friday. So I'm like, man, I, I know how to cook all that. So I just started making trap boxes. Like, we got some, got nachos in them. Something got quesadillas in them, so mm -hmm. the different variety, the trap box, <laughs> what made me really keep going. And I just kept dropping other, like, hibachi. We got to go to Gingy. That's, they paid $30 just for one plate. Damn. So I'll give you that same plate for $15. And it's heavy. And it's more heavy. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man, that's what I like. You know what I'm saying? Cheap, but you know what I'm saying? Cheap. Reasonable and it's gonna taste good. Like, I don't anybody that know me and know me about my food, I don't play about my food. I won't serve you nothing, I won't eat. So, if it ain't up to my part, like, I go to places, they like, Why we can't have that? I'm like, It ain't up to my quality. And they still give me to me. I'm like, You sure? Man, it's good. What's wrong with you? I'm like, It just won't up to my quality. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it is. Trap, then we got hibachi, then we got the soul food, street tacos. I do not make burrito tacos. I make street tacos. <laughs> burrito tacos is goat meat. I don't make nothing with no goat. That's why everybody sit there for 15 and higher. No, I use roast. Uh, me, I'm flavorful. That's what I use. I'm different. And I like to just be different. I don't like to do what everybody else do. I like to do it my way. Like What we say? Phillies? Oh, yeah. We got the Philly cheese steaks. Them heavy, the chicken Phillies. I got stuff I ain't even dropped yet. I still ain't made a lamb chop dinner yet. I got, I can't tell y'all that. I just got some stuff. <laughs> I was about to say. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta wait for that. We dropping out soon. Yeah. So yeah, it's just the tra- the trap box. Like yeah, one of the one of the main things. Like you. Man, I look good, man. Oh yeah, that's for you too. Oh shoot. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm expecting this. Oh yeah. Let me try. Let me try oh, one. Oh yeah. Try one real quick. Oh yeah, y'all. It's hitting, <laughs> man. Oh yeah. That's my hot lemon pepper wings right there, man. Yeah, it's just it's it's just so good, like. Not too overcooked, just right, mm-hmm. man. Shoot, I'm gonna tear this up when y'all, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna make sure that this um get around too, cause I like to, you know, what I'm saying always help people, man, cause it's so much talent here. Everybody focus on the music portion, yeah, but it's talent here from entrepreneurs. You know, people that can, you know what I'm saying, do hair, do nails, do food. You know, music to me, I feel like it's not secondary, but it's just, you know, it's, it's really like, I would say number five of the great things that's popping here. Mm-hmm. And we need to pretty much understand that together because pretty much everybody priorities messed up. And when it comes to just, you know, food and everything like that, not to bring people together like food. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. So especially um, funerals rules and stuff man, like what? that. You know what I'm saying? You can make a person, you know, feel joy after they cry. And somebody was like, the tears make the chicken better or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> that was like crazy, man. But, but yeah, um, anything like you want to talk about? Like, you know, freelance? Man, just... Uh... We got, like, the food industry is really slept on in the city, though. Like, mm-hmm. we got some talented people, you know. We got, you know, put a fork downtown. I'm, that's my hunger. I mess with her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got Michael. You got Centurion. You got Carmelo. You got Robbie yeah. D's. You got you got so many people that be like, you got Tommy. You got so many people selling food and, like, got some good food that, like, people, like, we don't got nothing to eat, man. We got people right in our neighborhoods that can whip up some good dishes, like, we got my homeboy Heather and Neil. They be selling the nachos and stuff. We got it's like it's so much food that we don't know about that's here that we don't give a chance. So we definitely the food scene in Saginaw definitely about to change. We got a lot of people, but they be selling selling plates. You know what I'm saying? I don't sell plates. I sell food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Cause I, I um, used to work at Robbie D's and everything, so I I feel you on that. And it's just all about, you know, at the end of the day, it's just all about, you know what I'm saying, showing support for, for each other and mm-hmm. and showing love and making sure that, you know, we we get this money, man, because there's enough money out here for everybody. Yeah, oh, right. What God got is for you. Can't mm-hmm. nobody rob you of your blessing but yourself. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, you know, y'all episode 20 and everything like that. And I'm going to make sure that this gets heard, you know what I'm saying? This gets passed around because, you know, we got to show each other and show the world that we exist out here. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We taking over. Definitely is. But, yeah. Um, grab and trap. I don't know where we at. <laughs> Follow the grab and trap page. Y'all can add me. I add anybody. I don't really be on Facebook, so I don't care. <laughs> but y'all know where to find us at. We do pop-up shops. Yes, I do cater. That would be the biggest thing. People be scared to ask me, do I cater? Yes, I, I don't put it out enough, but yes, I do cater. We definitely about to uh, we get it in. We a hustle family. We got my wife on the nails. We got bro with the music also. So daddy with the barbershop. Mama be helping. So we a family of many hustles. So I'm grabbing the track. We got cousin do makeup. We got my own baker. We got it all. Whatever y'all need. We trying to be expanded out here. We trying to put second on on the map. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And I'm going to make sure I, you know, share all y'all, you know what I'm saying, information on my page and my fan page and everywhere I can think of. I'm going to make sure that y'all get heard, you know what I'm saying. But, yeah, um, before we wrap this up and everything, you know, 
tell people where they can find you if you if you have a snapchat instagram um youtube whatever just let us know snapchat tiktok instagram facebook everything is at grab the letter n and trap that's it you'll find it's easily we everywhere we respond we do food we going we got we we gonna start traveling soon so we already did a couple cities we sold out in lansing before I'm saying we did a wedding in Grand Rapids. We be traveling, so if you ain't in Saginaw, we coming to a city near you, and that's on everything. We G strong, sure. baby. Okay, well, I wanted to end this episode on a final thought. Well, y'all heard my man's story, how he pretty much, you know, rise to greatness, and it doesn't matter where you came from. It's all about where you're going and how you finish. And just got to make sure that you keep your head up and you keep yourself focused and everything like that. It's so easy to get distracted by bills, life. If you have a nine to five job, don't ever let nobody stop you from your goals. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, to become an entrepreneur, become a boss. Just strive to be a boss and strive for greatness. Cause life too short out here. Yes, sir. People dropping like flies and, yeah. and and just just imagine how many people we lost that don't get a chance to have their voice heard or footage or any legacy. And it's all about legacy. You know what I'm saying? The clout is is secondary. It's unimportant. The legacy is important. And I thank these two gentlemen for coming to the show today and, you know, giving y'all their information, their heart, oh, and definitely their food. I know you yeah, have <laughs> <laughs> about to tear this up. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> if y'all don't know, you don't know. But yeah, check out Grab and Trap, and I'm going to make sure that I, you know, give their information across. And this is closes this episode. Thank y'all for tuning in. And be expecting them in the near future. Mm -hmm. Peace.